Today we're talking about one of the biggest traps most dads fall into and fail to achieve their fitness goals, which is the obsession of doing everything right or otherwise it's not even worth getting started. That you have to either be all in and doing amazing from the very beginning, otherwise anything shorter to that doesn't even matter. The all or nothing mindset is the most common anchor holding busy dads back and something we see as well more often than uh, anything else in our coaching program, the Dadbot Demolition Project. The reality though is that once you join the adult world of being a dad, husband and a working man, obsessing over perfection only holds you back. In other words, the number one reason you keep failing your fitness goals is because you expect too much from yourself too soon with no leeway for learning or failure. So what if I told you that getting to your goal is not about trying harder or being stricter or trying something fancy or different and that the real obstacle is not your hectic schedule, lack of time and knowledge or the never ending responsibilities, at least not as much as you think. We know this because we have many dads on our program who have done amazing despite their crazy daily program or the fact that they had no idea about what to do when they first came into the program. So then what sets apart the busy dads who succeed and the busy dads who fail? Well, our most successful trainees, those who have crushed their goals, created lifelong habits and sustained the results, aren't those who make no mistakes. After all, they're human like you and me, and our most successful trainees are really the ones who put our advice into practice, mess up and learn from their mistakes and get back on the horse consistently. If they miss one workout, they don't let that bulldoze them into missing a whole week. If they overeat in one meal, they make sure they nail the next one. If they make a mistake, they seek the lesson in the mistake and learn from it rather than labeling it as failure. And the way we coach people really is by helping them see their mistakes as stepping stones to achieving their goals. It's really about understanding that the reason you make mistakes is because you still have more to learn on that thing you didn't get right. And the more you do so while remaining curious about why this is happening, the closer you get to that goal. And that's what a flexible mindset is. When you can see mistakes as learning opportunities, when you are open to new perspectives, ideas, and taking on risks and challenges, and focus on wins instead of feeling defeated by tiny slip ups. Something you can't do if you're stuck in a rigid mindset that keeps you stressed, disappointed, and angry at yourself. A mindset that is selfish, judgmental, stiff, and hard, aiming at protecting really a limited version of who you are, rather than helping you learn, improve, and become a better version of yourself. So how do you become more flexible then? Well, just like you need the right kind of repetitions to build muscle, you need the right kind of repetitions to train and transform your mindset. In a nutshell, your brain creates habits most efficiently through repetitions that evoke positive emotions, whether that's feeling better after training, noticing your gut shrinking, or even having less body aches. If your brain connects something with feeling better because of it, it will stick to it. And the more times you do it, the more your brain ingrains it as a habit. On the other hand, if you possess the all or nothing mindset, it's because you've practiced it countless times throughout the years, either consciously or unconsciously. It's because it served a purpose at some point, which is not really serving right now, and therefore it's time to change it. Still, going from a rigid to a flexible mindset requires intentional and deliberate practice towards the opposite direction. But before we delve deeper into how to become more flexible, here's a classic story about an old Cherokee teaching his grandson about life and really the importance of practicing the right mindset. A fight is going on inside me, says the old Cherokee to the boy. It's a terrible fight and it's between two wolves. One is evil, he's anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other one is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person. The grandson thinks about this for a minute and he asks his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replies, the one you feed. 
That last part basically explains how our brain works, yet most of us are unaware of it, so we end up feeding the wrong wolf and sabotaging ourselves. An unwanted thought pops in our mind and we instantly invest energy into it. Thus, the more we converse with it, fight it, analyze it and try to prove it wrong, the more we show our brain that this thought is important to us and the more we keep getting it. The same goes for the all or nothing mindset. The more you invest energy into absolute thoughts that your mind gives you, the more you're going to get them. So how do we change this? How do we abandon these thoughts, change our mindset and become more flexible? The first step you can do is merely notice the thoughts. If you're familiar with mindfulness practices, you know what I mean. You know, this means that you don't judge your thoughts, you don't analyze, you don't fight back, uh, you don't uh, agree or even converse with them, you don't invest no energy, you just let them pass through your head. By doing this, you signify to your brain that these thoughts aren't that important to you and you weaken the neuronal pathway that is linked to them and you start getting them less and less. Plus, you won't go into a downward spiral and you won't get the associated feelings of analyzing it even further. If you struggle with the all or nothing mindset, chances are you talk poorly to yourself. You judge, criticize and belittle yourself when you don't rise up to unrealistic expectations. But just as you wouldn't talk to someone you love this way, uh, like your kids, for example, or your wife, uh, just because they would lose a training session and, uh, you know, um, eat something bad, the same goes for yourself. So once again, when you notice this kind of self-talk, just interrupt it. If it's critical, cruel, hard and judgmental, just say something along the lines, um, it's OK. I'll just get back on the horse. This is a process and I'm getting better at it one step at a time. In other words, treat yourself with kindness and understanding as you would a loved one. Show self-compassion, have patience and be more lenient. This way you will slowly enforce a more positive self-image. One thing you have to realize is that a big part of our brain, our primal brain, is not designed and evolved to seek and focus on the positives in your life. Rather, it's always defaulting into scanning for danger and threats in our immediate environment using a system called reticular activating system. This tendency is basically the negativity bias and the more stressed, exhausted, fatigued and frustrated you are, the less you're going to appreciate the good things in your life, your progress and your wins, and the more you're going to focus on what's wrong, what you didn't do well and how you're not good enough. So to combat this, you have to go out of your way and practice gratitude and count your wins. You have to go against your brain's default systems and you have to do what uh, we teach people do in our program, the Dadbot Demolition Project, which is every week we have them focus mostly on what they're doing well. You know, we have them focus on their achievements, uh, their wins and uh, what they managed to do, not what they didn't manage to do so much. You know, of course, we're going to learn from our mistakes. This helps them see that they are indeed progressing, even if they're just getting tiny steps and it motivates them to keep going because gratitude gives way to patience, motivation, consistency, and it helps decrease stress massively. One of our favorite practices is the never miss twice rule. I took this from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. And uh, what it means, or the way that uh, at least we use it, is that if you miss one training session, if you mess up one meal, if you sleep very late one day or anything else, then you learn from it and you just make sure you don't miss twice in a row. This helps you be more lenient and less critical with yourself and not get bogged down by the occasional sleep up. It teaches you to simply jump back on the horse consistently because one sleep up means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Just as one good meal or one workout will make you thin, uh, one mistake or one missed meal uh, or one missed workout isn't going to make you fat. In summary, dropping the all or nothing mindset is not an easy task, but that doesn't mean that it's set in stone. It's 
just an ingrained pattern and uprooting it takes deliberate practice and patience. Our whole coaching method is built on this premise based on neuroscience, psychology, and the principles of consistency. If you've learned something, you can unlearn it and learn it something better. In the end, you are what you consistently practice. We keep repeating this to our trainees. So becoming self-aware of that voice in your head, interrupting it and adopting a more helpful perspective and internal language is key. One uh, that will cheer for you and will help you feel more motivated and be more consistent in the long run so that you can get to your goals slowly but steadily and surely. Mm -hmm.